Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the very unofficial travel guides. And uh, there's nobody here yet, but I'm assuming this is working correctly. And what I need you to do is what everybody always needs at the beginning of a live stream. Write some comments so I know that there's somebody out there. And uh, in a few minutes, when we get a couple people here, then I will start the official video. But in the meantime, hello, everybody. Anybody? Is there anybody out there? Oh wait, let me see what is around here. I see, yeah, so Melissa Miro. Hi, Melissa, you're the first one, at least the first one to write anything. It's a cold, rainy Sunday night here in Hamburg uh, and the wind is blowing so hard, I don't know if you can hear it, but Hamburg is uh, kind of like a coastal city, right on the river and about an hour North from here is the North Sea. So sometimes we do get some pretty extreme weather, some flash floods, some crazy rainstorms and winds. And tonight is probably going to be one of those nights. Like I said, the wind is so loud outside. So if you hear anything like sort of going in the background, that's what that is. Who else is here besides Melissa? Write me something in uh, the comments or... Do I have to, um, let me see if I have to like open another window. This is that awkward time of any live stream where you're always just wondering, is it working? Uh, so can you guys see me okay? Am I loud enough? Should I talk louder? All right, I can see some more comments here. Shannon, Kyle, Nautical Cat, hi. Uh, some of you have asked me uh, if I could show Chili in a Sunday sofa time, my cat, and the answer is no, because she's totally freaked out by uh, the light that I set up. So she, like if she's sleeping here on the couch and I set this up, as soon as she sees it, she disappears. I don't know why that is. Uh... Melissa says, can see and hear me perfectly. Well, great. Uh, H.A. Bracken says, didn't get a notification. Hmm. I posted about it on Facebook twice and on YouTube. Um, all right. I am going to go to Facebook real quick and let everybody know that, uh, that it started. I really should take some kind of workshop on how to do this better. It's one aspect of the whole YouTube world that I just don't really have a lot of experience with yet. All right. Let me see. Is there a link I can share? Where can I find it? It's, it's, there it is. Okay. Hello, everybody out there. I'm just uh, going to... Um, Send the link on YouTube and then we'll get started here. Good, it's posted. I don't know how else to inform people that it's going on, so we'll leave it at that. This can go away now. All right, hello to everybody who's here so far. I am going to do this uh, a little bit differently than I did it last time. Uh, I have a specific topic, like a normal Sunday sofa time topic that I wanna talk about today that I wanna explore. And uh, in the end, where I would usually, on a Sunday sofa time, where I would usually comment on your comments, that's where I'm going to take questions. So uh, in the meantime, I will be asking you questions and I'll be reading some of your comments. But uh, uh, 
like I said, hang around until the end if you want to ask any other questions or like general questions about cruising, traveling, uh, that kind of stuff as well. Uh, and uh, the one thing I wanted to say though is if there is um, if there's something that you really want to know in between or some question that you want me to answer right away, then do it as a, um, what's it called again, a super chat. Uh, and when a super chat pops up, then I will like immediately pay attention to it for you and let you know what you want to know or just read whatever it is you want me to say. It's kind of like, it's kind of like prostitution in a way. <laughs> or is it? I don't know. All right. So let's begin this Sunday sofa time. And I'm going to do it like I always do. Ready? Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the very unofficial travel guides. I'm Morgan. And today on Sunday Sofa Time, we're going to talk about my dream cruise job. And then the introduction comes and it goes, do, 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 do. Kind of sounds like that, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't think I can do it better than that without instruments and a synthesizer. Yes, welcome back, everybody. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. Uh, I travel all around the world to popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it was like to be there. And uh, as I've started saying recently, I make the travel mistakes, so you don't have to. Uh, as I said in the introduction, uh, and to anybody who's here right now, this is a live Sunday sofa time. I'm actually sitting here in front of the red sofa right now. It doesn't look very red in this light, does it? It's because the webcam has a totally different uh, resolution than my fancy schmancy Canon camera. Uh, but in this Sunday sofa time, I'm talking about my dream job. If uh, you want to ask me a question, if you want to uh, know anything, uh, hang around until the end when I do comment on your comments. If you have something that's really burning that you want me to talk about right now, then do it as a super chat. And otherwise, just hang out, listen, and I've got some questions for you as well. So this was an idea I uh, had uh, when I was thinking about, uh, I was reading through some comments, thinking about how could I, you know, make more cruise content? How could I get the chance to help inform more of uh, you out there about cruise ships, about the different cabin categories, about the different ports? You know, I think I've said this before, I finance all my own trips. I'm not sponsored by anybody. And, you know, it, there's a limit. And so one thing I thought was, well, what if I got a job on a cruise ship? Then, you know, I could explore that specific ship for, you know, like every nook and cranny of it and know everything about it and get to go to all the ports that it goes to. But working on a cruise ship is a different atmosphere than I think a lot of other, uh, you know, workplaces. Uh, it's just so unique. And so I uh, looked up a list like a gigantic list of like, it was probably like 50 jobs, 50 positions that you can get on uh, as part of a cruise, a cruise ship crew or a cruise ship staff. And uh, I looked through them all and I contemplated them all. And what I want to talk about now is I wrote down uh, a list. It's going to be five things that I know I can't do or don't want to do. Um, five things that I think I'm kind of qualified to do, but I but I don't want to do, at least not on a cruise ship. And then the end, I will tell you, uh, yeah, what I think the perfect job for me, my dream job on a cruise ship would be. Uh, so I'm going to begin with the five things that I know I wouldn't be good at or that I just definitely wouldn't want to do, at least not on a cruise ship. Uh, but before I do that, let me just say hi to a few of you uh, because I'm really glad you're here and, uh, and, as I said in the last Sunday Sofa Time, one of the reasons that I don't do these live streams, these live chats very often is because I just feel like something always goes wrong. There's some sort of complication. It doesn't look good. And, you know, I just get embarrassed. So this time it's already going so much better. So I just want to say hi to uh, Night Audit, who's um, waking up in British Columbia. Hey, Betsy, welcome back. Virginia uh, Gulili, hi. Good to see you here. Um, Stephanie Christie, hello from sunny Florida. Oh, Stephanie, don't tease. As I was just saying, it's stormy and dark and rainy here right now and cold. Hi, uh, Trish. Hi, Vanessa. Um, H.A. Bracken, what is your name? Is your name like Henry Adam or 
Hannah, Eileen, I don't know, I'm just guessing. Uh, hi, Ian. Uh, hi, everybody who's out there. And uh, I'm sorry if I didn't say hi to you now. Um, but Helen, Helen Anna, oh, I was close, kind of. Or not? No. All right, well, hi, Helen. Uh, anyways, so I'm going to begin with these five things that I know I will never be doing on a cruise ship. And the one that I wrote down is like anything that has to do with any kind of engineering experience. So, you know, there is like the captain, the the co-captain or the assistant captain, what's that guy called again? The first officer, you know, there's all these people who work like behind the scenes, making sure the ship has enough fuel, that the systems are running correctly. And that is just a job that I know I would never want to do. I would never want that kind of responsibility. And I'm just not qualified with my ex with my education and my, um, yeah, talents to do, I don't think, any of those jobs. I can't imagine that anybody would ever offer one to me, and uh, I just, I don't think I'd be good at it. Oh, the first super chat has uh, shown up. <laughs> Thank you very much, Helen Anna, or H-A. Uh, Helen uh, writes, no question, just a token of appreciation, and I can only say no. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for that super chat. And yeah, thanks for coming to hang out. First mate, Betsy, is that, you mean that's like the assistant captain, the first mate? That's what it was on pirate ships at least. So I don't know, do they still, do they still call it that? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, all right. Moving on. The next one would be anything on the medical staff. Of course, uh, you know, it's important to be a trained medical professional. There are, uh, at least on all the cruise ships I've been on. Hold on. I got to move my legs because my foot is falling asleep already. Not a good sign. Uh, there are medical professionals on ships. Uh, and for those of you who've been around here for a while, you've seen me spend some time in the medical center because I ripped a gash open in the bottom of my foot while on uh, the Harmony of the Seas. And I had to get stitches. So, you know, you can search my library for that. I think the video is called Getting Stitches on a Cruise or I Got Stitches on a Cruise. It's in two parts. The first part is where you see the actual, more or less the actual moment where I injured my foot. And then the second part is everything once I got back on the ship waiting to get to the medical center. And it even showed me actually getting the stitches, which was pretty painful, actually. Uh, and um, yeah, so I know that I will never work in the medical center on a cruise ship or any other place, unless maybe they just need a receptionist. I don't know. I can type in appointments and stuff like that, but I am not going to be uh, taking care of anybody's kidney dialysis or anything like that. Uh, those kind of things that people sometimes get done on a cruise ship. And by the way, I hope it doesn't seem like I'm like criticizing or making fun of these jobs. They're all very important. I'm just saying I'm not the right person for these jobs. And I'm so happy that there are enough other people who are the right people for these jobs. So if any of you work on a cruise ship, make sure you let me know. Uh, all right, moving on. Another thing, another job that I know I will never do on a cruise ship or should never do on a cruise ship is something in the casino. You know, I love to hang out in the casino. I love to sit at the slot machines and play the little games. And Marcus and I have like the system that we do to, to like stretch the money and make uh, the time last longer. It makes it, I don't know, more fun. Maybe I'll explain it to you guys sometime in some video. Um, but... Uh, I'm not good with counting and with like with money. So any kind of job that would involve me like, uh, you know, having to count people's money really quickly or, you know, like being a blackjack dealer and having to count people's cards as I'm laying them down, that is absolutely not the right job for me. And uh, on most, I think on every cruise ship I've ever been on, the casino is one of the most popular smoking areas. And I just don't want to work in the smoking area. So that's a couple more reasons why I would, um, you know, I would not be the right person to work in a casino. 
All right, another one is uh, like in the spa or the cosmetology, you know, the, the, um, the salon. Uh, not because I would be like opposed to it, but that's just not, you know, I don't have that kind of training. And, uh, and I'm pretty sure that the people who get hired to work, especially in the, the, the spas doing the, you know, the body treatments and the massages and stuff like that, they're usually really, really good. Uh, I've only ever gotten two massages on a cruise ship because I just think they're, they're much too expensive. But every time I've had it done, it has been really excellent service. I did get my hair cut also once. I forgot about that. I got my hair cut on the getaway, the epic. Does anybody remember with that really funny guy? Uh, yeah, so um, that's just another thing that uh, I'm sure that the people who do it, they enjoy their job, but I'm not qualified to do that, and it's not something that I could ever imagine myself doing. All right, here's <laughs> the final thing uh, on this list of five things that I picked out that are jobs that I just know I will never do. Might be a job that I would be interested in, but I just don't know exactly what it is. And uh, it's going to be the first question I have for you. So if anybody knows what this is, get ready to explain it to me in the comments. The, the, the job description listed there or the title of the job was just called Gentleman Host. So uh, what does a gentleman host do? Can somebody please explain it to me? Because you know my fantasy is going in all sorts of different places, and I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure that one of those is the right place. So, if anybody knows what what a gentleman host does on a cruise ship, let's talk about it in the comments right now. As I've said before, welcome everybody. Thanks for uh, being here. Uh, if you um, Want to write something to me in the comments? I'll be looking through those at the end, or actually right now. And otherwise, if you want to, to ask something right away, then send it in a super chat, and I will stop everything and pay attention to it at that moment. All right. Um, let's see here. Shannon says, your trip to the medical center video helped a lot when I had to take my daughter to the ship medical center when her finger got cut on the ice rink. Oh, well, I guess in a way I'm glad I could help, but I'm sorry that you had to use that information for that. Uh, situation. Um, one great chef, 123, says, I don't think that any job would be uh, any good on a cruise ship. Better to be a passenger. Working on one would be would be like be on floating, oh, would be like being on a floating prison. Well, you know, different strokes for different folks. All right, I'm trying to find out now if anybody knows what a gentleman host is. Uh, pointer dog, uh, it says, gentleman host, he, 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 I know, that's what I'm thinking. What is it? I, I do have an idea. Um, and some, I think somebody wrote it here. Trish Thatcher says, ha, 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 sounds kinky. I know, right? What kind of cruise are they on? Uh, all right. Um, Helen, Helen, right? Helen wrote, I think they dance with the single ladies on the ship. And that's what I'm thinking it is too. Um, Nika writes here in German, uh, is this a job for Schiffe mit älteren Gästen? Frauen werden ältere als Männer und diese Hosts sind da, um mit den Damen zu tanzen oder zu essen. So what, uh, what Nika wrote is, yeah, the same thing, that it's a job for uh, on ships with older guests because uh, women usually get older than their husbands or they live longer than their husbands, and these hosts are there so that the older women have somebody to dance with or to eat with. So, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of nice. It's kind of neat in a way. And, you know, I recently watched uh, a show about, uh, about geishas in, um, in Japan, and in a way, that's kind of similar. Don't you think if you guys know something about the geisha culture, uh, you know, don't you think it's kind of similar? That's where you can also pay to just hang out with this woman. It's not supposed to be anything sexual, but she's there to listen to you talk, to uh, to have tea with you, to just sort of hang out with you. And in a way, that's kind of like, um, uh, yeah, I guess what these gentlemen hosts do. Does anybody else have, uh, have something to add to that, what a gentleman host would be?
Silver Rabbit says, in Japan, a gentleman host is where you would have to cater to women mostly to upsell drinks. I think drinks is what you meant to write there. It's a very funny ty uh, typo, actually. <laughs> uh, but, uh, okay, so like, but do they know that you're working there or are you supposed to like keep it like on the down though? So you're just forcing them to buy more drinks, but they don't know that you're working with the bar? I don't know. Um, 18 Knots also says, wasn't the gentleman host the staff that danced with passengers? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm assuming. That's what a couple other people are saying as well. <laughs> Farewell, my concubines. Very nice. Um, gentleman host, 18 Knots writes, gentleman host would probably be on lines catering to the older crowd. Yeah. Uh, do you like going to bed by 9 p.m.? I guess it depends on what time I have to get up. Um, okay. Sylvie, Sylvain or Sylvain uh, Feral Forest writes, we sailed on Holland America's Zandam once and they feature gentlemen hosts who invite single women for ballroom dancing. All right, well, okay. So this, is, maybe I could do this job because I have a lot of experience dancing with partners from, you know, in my old career uh, on the musical stages, I did a lot of partnering. Um, but uh, I'm wondering if that is all they do is that or when I get to my list of five things that I know I could do on a ship, but wouldn't do on a ship, one of the main reasons I don't think I do any of these is just because of the conditions that you have to work under and the other things that you have to be doing other than just that specific job that you're there for. So I'm wondering if, um, I'm wondering what the side duties basically would be for a gentleman host, but I wanted to go back here and see, um, Silver Rabbit. Okay, Silver Rabbit answered my question uh, about what it's like in Japan and um, wrote, they know you are working for the bar. It's mostly for lonely women. So, yeah, it's kind of, in a way, it, is it also similar to the, the geishas where they're there just to sit with you and to keep you company and to listen to you? Uh, uh, well, somebody sent me something here. Oh, it's not a super chat. It's... Oh, um, it is a, uh, a link from Stephanie Christie and YouTube just wanted to make sure that it wasn't spam. So thanks, Stephanie. I'm, I'm afraid to click on the link now because I don't want to, it to mess up the chat. So uh, maybe I'll look at it later. Um, <laughs> writes that the gentleman host, they have to be very versatile because not every single woman is Ginger Rogers. <laughs> Oh, I can only imagine what you mean. There's probably, yeah, these older women who miss dancing, but they probably, you know, some of them have two left feet. Some people don't have rhythm and then they don't know they don't have rhythm. I'm sure there's a lot of that. That's, um, that's kind of funny. Uh, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Glad you're here. All right. I am going to move on to my five things that uh, I know I could do or probably could do that I don't want to do. And let me just welcome everybody again who uh, maybe has shown up in the middle here. Um, we're talking about dream cruise ship jobs. I'm going through a list of a couple different things. And at the end, I'll tell you what I think I would do if I was ever going to actually work on a cruise ship. Uh, at the end, I'm going to be going through your comments and answering your questions. If there's anything you want to talk about immediately, then send it as a super chat and I will look at it right away. And before I start my the next part of the list, I just need to take a drink. I've been talking a lot. And this is just water, so boring. Oh, by the way, did you guys see um, my appearance in the Cruising with Wheels New Year's video? Uh, <laughs> it just made me think of Dilly Dilly. So uh, Kevin and Frank, if you're watching, Dilly Dilly with my water. And thanks again for including me in that video. For everybody else, uh, go over to the Cruising uh, with Wheels channel and watch their New Year's video, and you might see somebody familiar. All right, moving on. Uh, and this is actually kind of, yeah, similar. 
um, like I said, I had this list, this huge list of jobs on a cruise ship. And I went through and I picked some things out that I knew I would never do, some that I could do, but I won't do. And the first one on that list is a dance instructor. With all the dance training I've had and all the musicals I've worked in, and I have actually worked uh, giving class, being a dance instructor on land. So I'm definitely, definitely qualified and experienced in that field. But I know that the people who work as dance instructors on board, they usually have so many other duties they have to do. And those duties are things that just I'm not interested in doing. Like I know a lot of them, they are then the crew in the, um, for the, the, musicals and the performance shows at night they're running the spotlights they're setting up the props they're helping their dressers they're dressing the the performers backstage and uh, that's those are very interesting jobs but yeah i'm kind of that part of my career that part of my life is i'm just kind of past that so that's why i don't think that i would work as a dance instructor although i have done it in the past just not on a cruise ship and uh that's another thing i mean of course with all my musical experience uh i could be yeah i could be in one of the shows on a cruise ship one of the big production shows you know like greece or Mamma Mia or, or, you know, the original musicals and stuff like that as part of the onboard ship ensemble. It's something that I've, I've considered several times and that I've thought was really interesting. And I have auditioned for a few ships. Maybe I should do that video too. Somebody remind me of that in a few weeks that I wanted to do a video about uh, auditioning for cruise ship musicals. Anyways, um, the reason I wouldn't do that now is because like I said, it's kind of like that part of my career is, is over. It's kind of in the past. And um, although they do have pretty high status on board, the contracts are just so long and I don't want to, I couldn't imagine leaving Marcus and the cat in my apartment and all the, you know, the luxuries I have here. I couldn't imagine leaving that behind for six whole months and being on a ship it's just um i, I feel like that uh, that ship has sailed those those uh, those days where i was up for those kind of adventures it's just kind of over um another thing that i always think would be interesting and it always seems like they're having a lot of fun is the um the, the activity staff, so the people, you know, who are running the game shows, who are on the, the pool deck doing the, the belly flop contest and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. I always, um, it always looks like they're having so much fun. And I think that at a certain time in my life, I would have been really good at that job. I would have really enjoyed it. Uh, and so it's something that I know, like, like if somebody you know, gun at my head was like, you have to pick a cruise ship job. I'm pretty sure that would be a job I could do. However, I know they, you know, like a lot of these people, they just, they don't only do just that. And they have so many extra things they have to do. And you're basically working seven days a week. And sometimes from like breakfast until the last person leaves the dance party at night. And, you know, for, for the money they make, I just, I don't think I could do it. Not, not at this stage in my life, I know I sound like I'm, like I'm a bitter old man as I keep saying that, but I just think, you know, those are great jobs for like when you're, you know, fresh out of college or, you know, maybe between high school and college. I think that's a great job for that, you know, like sort of like an extended summer job. But when you've, you know, had a, a big career doing what you want to do and you're sort of like middle age, like I am, uh, yeah. I think it's better to pick something else, and that's why I wouldn't do it. Um, another uh, one on the list is connected to that, and that would be the cruise director. I think if I had to be on like the cruise director staff or the activity staff, then probably the best job for me, the, the one that I would be most interested in, would be to be the actual cruise director uh, himself or herself, I mean, in my case, himself, you know, like the, the person who walks around and makes sure that everybody's having fun, uh, you know, usually they are also involved in some of the show. So that's also really interesting. And I've heard that they, that they're actually paid pretty well. And as far as onboard uh, staff, that the, the conditions of their contracts are really good. And I, 
I know that some of them, they just do it over and over and over again. And they, they have houses in Florida and they'll be like on board for three months and then off for a month and then on board for three months and off for a month. And, you know, I kind of think I could, um, I kind of think I could make that work, but it's just not something that I, I don't think that I would like apply for it in that way. All right. Uh, final thing on this list of the things that, um, I think I could do, but I know I wouldn't do, basically. That is uh, to be a shore excursion host. I think it sounds like a lot of fun to just get to know some some cruise ports really, really well and be like the expert for these people who are coming uh, to go out and show them and to show them the best things, the best places to get something to eat, the funnest things to do, the things to watch out for. I mean, basically... That's what I try to do here on this channel. You know, I always say I, you know, I, I do it because I want to help you guys prepare and have a good time. And uh, it's something that I really, really enjoy. And, uh, you know, being part of the, um, the excursion staff, uh, they basically do that, but like in real life and then in the actual places, you know, I'm there once, make videos about it, put it online and then, you know, like, 100,000 people watch it, but the people who do it on the ships, they actually like interact with, you know, 100,000 people, if how, you know, depends on how long their contract is or how long they stay on board. You know, they're actually there doing it and showing the people and something about that seems really, really enticing and intriguing to me. But just, you know, for the same reasons, for the all the other things they have to do, and probably, they probably have to deal with a lot of complaints and a lot of annoying things that, you know, we just don't see. Uh, but I just don't think that I could, um, yeah, I don't think that I could do it, at least not for, uh, not in the conditions of the contracts that I'm assuming they have. So that was my, the fifth thing uh, of the 10 things where the first five were, I know I will never do, I'm just not qualified or I would be the wrong person for that job. The next five were um, were uh, things that I could do, that I'm qualified for, that I've done before, but I just know I wouldn't do on a ship. And in just a moment, I'm gonna tell you what I think if I had to work on a ship, what my actual dream job would be. But before I do that, in the meantime, let me welcome everybody here again and say that I really, really, uh, I, I guess I do enjoy doing this now that I'm kind of getting the hang of it. I'm glad you're all here uh, to hang out with me as well. And uh, after I'm done blabbing about all the stuff that I want to blab about, I will be answering more of your questions, reading through more of your comments. If there's anything that you want to tell me about right away, then send it in a super chat and I'll answer it like immediately. And now I'm going to take another drink of water. All right, moving on to the one thing that I think if I was going to work on a cruise ship now at this stage in my life with everything I've done, what is it that I would want to do? And that is I would want to be a guest entertainer or a headliner. So if, you, um, if you've been on a ship, oops, I just turned on Siri. Sorry, Siri. If you've been on a ship, you know at least on most of the ships that I've been on, there have been the onboard show staff. And those are the ones who are like, you know, if they have like a, you know, a top 40 hits of the 80s show. And then they also have a, you know, a main musical like Hairspray or whatever. Those are the people who are the main staff who are in both of those shows. They're on board, excuse me, for like six to eight months sometimes just doing those shows they do have a pretty high status. They are paid pretty well. However, just the length of that contract is just so long. And that's one reason that I think, you know, now, like I said, with everything I've gone through and everything I've done, with the way that my life is set up now, I just couldn't, couldn't or wouldn't want to go away for six to eight months. However, the headline entertainers who are on the ship doing their own show, the show that like they produced, uh, and the cruise ship hired them to come on board. They are paid even better. They have a better status on board and they are on board for a much, much shorter time. So I'm talking about, you know, like the four 
tenors or, you know, the hypnotists that are on board or the, the people who, you know, have like a solo show um, with a live orchestra. They are booked for sometimes only one cruise at a time. They make a ton of money. They're flown there. They have passenger status on board and they can basically do anything that a guest would do. And then they do their show maybe like two times or four times on that trip. And I think that would be the perfect job for me because, uh, first of all, you know, I'm, yeah, I am a singy, dancy person. I've uh, made most of my living, my adult life in musicals or working in showbiz in some form, including right now, even though I don't talk about what I do right now. And uh, yeah, I would love to, uh, I would love to get the opportunity, although I, I don't, I don't foresee it happening now, but if I had the opportunity to go or to work on ships as a guest entertainer or headliner, that would be, that would be the way to go. And I think uh, I really admire uh, and I'm kind of jealous of the people who do it just because, yeah, I think it'd be great. And think of how many more videos I could make and, uh, and how easy, how much easier it would be to like meet you guys in person and hang out with you. So yeah, I don't know, maybe it will happen someday, but uh, it would take a lot of work on my part. And in order to have time to do that work, I would have to quit my, my real life job that I'm doing now. I don't see that happening, at least not this week. <laughs> All right. Uh, that was Sunday Sofa Time, and now comes the time on Sunday Sofa Time where I comment on your comments live on air. How does that song go? It goes like... All right, let me go back here and see what you guys have been asking and wanting me uh, to talk about. Um... Body on Frame writes, yes, I was going to suggest cruise director. I think you'd be great at that. That's kind of high status, isn't it? Yes, I, I think they, well, I think they do get paid quite a bit and they have a shorter contract. However, when they're on board, they are like working all the time. You can't, uh, you know, I don't think that you're allowed to undertake any activity in the guest area unless you are interacting with guests, which means uh, if you're having dinner in the buffet, if you're going to have a drink at the bar, you have to be sitting with guests or talking with guests while you're doing it. I'm pretty sure, at, at least I know on some cruise lines, I'm pretty sure that that's the way they do it. 18 Knots writes, the more you talk about the amount of hours and duties on board, the more people should realize you really should be nice to the people helping make sure you enjoy your vacation. Oh, yes, that is so true. This is something that I get annoyed about. Every time I'm on a ship, you see people being so rude, not only to the other passengers, but also to the staff. And of course, you know, you're paying to be on board, which is, of course, paying their salary. Sometimes we're paying a lot to be on board these ships. However, there's still people trying to do a job. And really, there's almost never, almost never a reason to be rude to anybody and yeah, not even people who are working for you, basically. Uh, Maddie Bloomberg writes, Morgan, I sent you a direct message on Instagram a while ago, and it would mean so much if you could read it. Maddie, you know, I think that I looked for this and I told you that I couldn't find it unless you sent it like, you know, like right now, but let me look again. I'm scrolling here and I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, Maddie, and I have no direct message from you. I'm sorry. I'm going back three weeks. Five. I'm back five weeks here and I can't find any message from you. So I'm very sorry, Maddie, but uh, send it again and I'll read it. Um, <laughs> Trish Thatcher writes, you can show them how to get off the ship and right back on when it stops in Nassau. <laughs> I could do that. That's an inside joke uh, relating to one of my other videos. Um, Tom Green writes, hey, you had a blast in Atlantis and Nassau. And yeah, every time I've been to Atlantis, I've had a really good time. Uh, but of the three times I've been there, uh, two times Atlantis invited me to go. So uh, not having to pay 
to get in is definitely something that will make you have a better time there because uh, as I said in the videos when I visited there, uh, visiting Atlantis is not for somebody on a small budget. Um, Gina Overton asks, in your opinion, what is better value for money? Booking an NCL cruise through the UK European website or the US? Well, you know, Gina, which I, I guess I would just say whichever one has the best price. Um, the only thing I could think of that maybe makes a difference is sometimes when you book something through a European site, uh, breakfast will be included. Like a lot of times breakfast will be included for people from Europe just because, I don't know, I feel like it's sort of standard here, but in the United States, it's maybe not. I don't know. And sometimes when you book it then through the U.S., uh, those things are not included. Whereas sometimes when you book things from the U S things are included that aren't booked that are things are included that aren't normally included when you book from Europe. I don't know. I guess I really don't have an answer for your question. The easiest way I guess to make the decision is to just compare both and see whichever one is less. Right. Uh, Shannon's got to go. So bye-bye. Uh, this Shannon, thanks for hanging out uh, and have fun uh, with your Disney trip planning meeting at church. Yes. Um, Body on Frame writes, oh, number one pet peeve on a cruise is people being rude to the crew. They are not your slave. Treat them correctly. Amen. High five. Um, <laughs> Stephanie Christie writes, a lot of people on Oasis of the Seas were not washy-washy, happy-happy. Yes. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, if you didn't hear about that, the Oasis of the Seas recently had a really bad uh, norovirus outbreak. And I think they, they stopped the cruise, didn't they? They turned the, the ship around and took everybody back to land. Oh, that would be so disappointing. Can you imagine? Oh, that would be so awful. All right, I'm going to go here and uh, talk about a few other things, and then I'm going to wrap it up. It's been almost uh, almost uh, three quarters of an hour here. Um, Betsy uh, writes, I think you'd make a great cruise director, Morgan. Your voice would be f so fun to hear on the speakers announcing different activities. Plus, you like to play games and participate in cruise ship fun. Yeah, Betsy, that's what I mean. That's why I also think that I would... Like if I really had to pick a job, that that would be one that I would that I would pick. And I think that I would have a lot of fun doing it. And I think I would be good at it. Uh, but I just don't know if I could leave yeah, the normal world behind for that long. And then to work so intensely for that period of time. I think I'm much more happy doing what I'm doing here on land. Stephanie says, yes, they immediately turned around and went back to Port Canaveral. <sighs> that would be, that would be disappointing. Rob writes, this is not a cruise question, which is totally okay. Um, but do you have any recommendations, recommendations for doing Disney World solo? Well, uh, first of all, don't be afraid to do it solo because I think, and I have made a video about traveling solo, uh, I, it might have been a Sunday sofa time, actually. Uh, you can look through my library and search for traveling solo or solo traveling or something like that, and then you can see the video. I think one of the main advantages of traveling, traveling solo is you create the entire schedule for only you. And if you want to change something in the middle of the day or whatever, you don't have to discuss it with anybody. You don't have to, you know, worry about, oh, well, if I say I don't want to do that, how are they going to react? It's just you. So you basically have say in 100% of what happens and can change your idea at any second. And that's one thing that I think is fantastic about traveling solo. Another thing, another advantage uh, is that some of the attractions, although at Disney, do they? Yeah. Some attractions at Disney and a lot of attractions at Universal Studios have a single rider line. Um, and usually that is a shorter line for people like you who are riding solo. And then when there's like a, a car where four people can sit and there's a group of three, then you just get put with them. So here, there's some advice for you. Um, Stephanie says that the, that the people on the Oasis of the Seas, they got a full refund. Wow, well, I guess that's kind of nice. Silver lining. Um, 
Sharon Tonner Clarkson asks, Morgan, in your opinion, what is the best specialty restaurant on NCL or Royal? Oh, that's a tough question. And you know, um, Sharon, I haven't, I'm not much of a specialty restaurant person. I usually just eat in the buffet because I love to have, I love to enjoy the variety and be able to pick out a bunch of different things and try a bunch of different things. Um, I'm trying to think, I guess, you know, I can tell you about a few interesting experiences. I think the most interesting, the most like adventurous would be um, a Wonderland on Royal Caribbean that's on a lot of the newer ships. Like I saw Wonderland, I ate at Wonderland on the Harmony and I also just saw it recently on the Anthem. So if you want to do something like really special, that is uh, definitely nice. I know that... Um, we ate at the Triscaria on the Norwegian getaway, I think. Yeah, um, which is, you know, one of these restaurants where they come around just like with huge chunks of meat on a, on a stick and they slice it off onto your plate. And, you know, I don't eat meat, so it wasn't my restaurant, but we, we got an invitation to go there, so we went. And I know Marcus loved it, so uh, that's also an interesting specialty restaurant. And... Um, Hmm, trying to think of something else. Like I said, I'm just, I'm not much of a specialty restaurant person, so I, I guess I'm probably not the best person to answer that question, but I don't know, maybe that helped you a little bit. Uh, all right, I'm looking for a couple more things here, and then I better call it a night. Eighteen Knobs writes, "I could be, or don't forget, uh, guest lecturer, which is something that was on the list that I considered. Um, not always official staff, but could get you on a ship. Yeah, then I guess you know that's something that I definitely could imagine doing, and then maybe doing you know like a back-to-back -back cruise, and then doing my lecture twice on this cruise and twice on this cruise, because I think that's the way a lot of the headliners do it as well. What are some things that I could lecture about? About I don't know, surviving in the crazy world of musical showbiz." about creating a YouTube channel. I don't know. What would, wonder what people would, what would be worth charging, basically charging money to listen to hear me talk about? I don't know. Um, so Body on Frame writes, Wonderland is pure fun. I was skeptical at first, but I was very glad we tried. We did it on our first night on Anthem and it was a nice way to start off the cruise. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's a really special experience. I had the vegetarian food and I, yeah, I preferred eating someplace else when it come to the, came to the vegetarian stuff, but, um, but it's definitely a really, really special experience. Um, Ed Korn, hey Ed, um, writes, best food on Royal is Giovanni. Um, yeah, I, I've never been there, so I, I can't say, but I take your word for it. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up here, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to hang out. And if you're watching this um, like post live broadcast, then don't forget, you can still write something in the comments. And uh, I read the comments and I answer a lot of questions in the comments as well. So don't be shy. Write stuff in the comments and uh, I can talk about them then on next week's Sunday Sofa Time, which I don't think is going to be another live one but I don't know. We'll see how the week goes. Um, you can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube for more Sunday sofa times where I talk about travel related stuff here in front of the red sofa um, or my travel vlogs from around the world. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, yeah. thanks again. And I will see you guys soon. And now comes the time where I have to stop looking at the camera and find the stop button. There it is. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.